Okay, I had a question from a customer that has not gotten his machine yet. It's underway. And he was wondering how he puts together his workflow so that he is able to orient parts on the table if he's not doing a full sheet. Much of what he does is going to be cabinet work, and he's going to orient a full sheet and work that way. But if he's doing something else, his example was cutting out a J out of a 12 by 12 piece. So here's what we would do. I use vCarve. You can use whatever design software you want. But I'd create a new file. And this is a single-sided job. It's going to be 12 inches by 12 inches by 0.75 thickness material. And this would be your actual thickness. <clears throat> I often put the generic size when I'm designing it, but then when I machine it, I will modify it. And this is a 0 0.72, 0 0.77, depending on the material, that kind of thing. But get it the way you want, because you're going to cut down through that into the material. I typically touch my tool off on the top of the material surface, and then this is the part that he was not understanding exactly. So I'm going to change this to uh, 24 inches wide, uh, tall. So this will be basically oriented with the table long ways. It'll show a little better. Now, so we're going to touch the tool off to the top of the material, and then we pick here where our datum point is. This is our indexing point. This is the, basically when the machine is looking at the drawing file, the G-code, um, it's going to position everything from this point. So when we get to the machine, I'm going to position the tool using the console to the corner of the part. So in this case, I'm choosing the bottom left-hand corner. The only other one I typically do is the center sometimes, if it's an irregular size part. Say I'm carving something on a live edge piece, and it's, it's irregular, but I know that I've adjusted my whatever I want to carve, the, the text, uh, and, and paste, placed it properly, I can do it from the center of the part, too. So it's either this or this for me, the way I work. doesn't matter. So we'll tell it OK. And that's basically here. This is the material that I'm working with. In his case, he wanted to do some text. So we go in and put in some text and pick our font. I'm going to type in the letter J, and I'm going to use this, poor Richard, whatever. I'll make it 12 inches tall, or I'll change it to uh, 10 inches tall, because he had a 12 by 12. Hit tab, and it re resizes it. Now, I can position this how I want by dragging it. Uh, I can use the left button and drag it. I can use the arrow keys and nudge it, or the continuous nudge, or I can center it based on other parameters, previous geometry that I've driven, I've drawn, uh, whatever I want to do. So I'm just going to center it there. So again, the, the point of this was showing how to orient a particular part on the full 4x8 table if he only wants to do something small. So I basically got my geometry and my vectors the way I want, so I'm finished with this side, the design side. I'll flip over to the drawing side. It's always good to check here, and I'm orienting on the bottom left corner where the red dot is. I'm touching off the tool on the top of the material. I don't have any 3D items here. I'm just going to cut this out. So I'm going to cut outside that border. And that all looks good. I'm going to do a border cut using a quarter inch bit. Uh, and I'll cut all the way through the material. So I'm going to do T plus 0 0.02 equal. So that's 0 0.77 because my material was 0.75. I'm going to change to a different tool. And I'll do a quarter inch end mill. And I've got that set where I can go in a, a, a quarter inch deep. And that's fine. I'm going to do this. I can pick on this on these vectors that make the J, I can do it outside, inside, or on it. I'm going to go outside it, so that is what I'm going to see. That's going to be what's left. And I'll do a separate finishing pass with the 20 thousandths allowance with the reverse direction. So that'll really clean up this piece, if I, depending on what I'm cutting it out of. Um, when I do the three different pa steps down, I can do this in two if I wanted, and then do the finishing pass. But if I, I'm not in a rush, so if I just do this, that'll be fine. I'll add tabs, and I'm just going to put them here. Add tabs. Add tabs must be converted to curves. Once converted, do you want to convert it? Yes. I always try to put the tabs on a straight area. That way I can sand them off quickly. If I put them in a curve, I have to be more delicate with the, with the, the sanding. So that's all I'll need there. I could do one here, too, if I wanted. Um, and then I'll add ramps to it coming in. And uh, I'll call that profile cutout. And then calculate. And again, it's going to warn us, hey, we're going 0 0.77 deep on a 0.75 material. That's true. I'm cutting all the way through plus, plus 20 thousandths. 
this and we'll preview it and there it is and there's that's got my tabs I want to take that tab out so I'll go back into it double click on it and go to the tabs and I'll touch that tab and it's gone go back in and recalculate it and there we are now um, you can turn on the other view and that way I can see my 2d view too and this is my the tool path the vector that I was doing that's got my two my toolpath showing that 20,000 step over to do the finished cut um, but I still have to sand out these tabs and I often turn this off and on and there we are so at that point I'd save it and then when I get to the machine I'm gonna put down my piece of material wherever I want on the spoil board I'm gonna use the console of the smart bench to move the cutting head to this corner because I had selected that in my material setup remember to the bottom left hand corner which is here and I'll set that on my console so that's setting the X and Y starting point of where the G code is looking at stuff or it could be the center could be any of the other corners but that this is what I typically use and then tell it to go I mean I'm gonna hold it down however I want it so I'm just cutting this out I could put screws through here into the into this uh, tabletop or the spoil board I, I mean there's any number of different ways to do it I can hold it with the Craig inline clamps that I use you could use tape and the CA glue, any, how we're holding it down is not important in this, really. It's the question of how do I index an individual part if I'm not doing a whole sheet in his case. Because he's going to do mostly cabinet parts for this first big project that he has coming up because he's rebuilding cabinets for his new home. So um, that's basically it. We're, we're done. Uh, I'll take it the next step. The next step would be to save the G-code. And I would call this, uh, I'm just going to drop it down to... Uh, I'm just going to drop it down to the desktop, I guess. Doesn't matter. And I'll just call this Jesse. And and then it's there. Uh, then I would either carry it out to the machine on the USB stick or use uh, FileZilla or some other file transfer program to Wi-Fi it out there. That's what I do. I haven't used the file, the USB stick in months. Uh, I just don't use it. Um, but I don't have the machine on, so it won't, it won't communicate to it. So I, but you've seen other videos, plenty of videos on how to uh, do that uh, on my website. So that should hopefully answer. If I'm doing a, an individual part and I want to put it on the table just to cut out something, how do I control where I put that part? It doesn't matter. Just put it anywhere on the table that you can, uh, that the machine can get to it. And when you run the program, it's going to ask you for your datum point when you set up that job file to run. And in this case, we're going to come here click here and that's it we're going to touch the tool off to the top of the material or the spool board I usually do the top of the material and cut the job so I hope that answers your questions if I can answer anything else please don't hesitate to call or email